What is up folks, Solar Strike here, and today we are here to cover the development of Windows 2000. Released in early 2000 to enterprises and professional users, it marked a substantial leap from Windows NT 4.0, released in mid-1996, featuring much of Windows 98's enhancements such as plug-and-play hardware support and USB support, along with NTFS 3.0, various file system encryption methods, and Active Directory. Among other goodies new to the NT line of Windows versions, marking the beginning of the merger between the professional and the consumer world of Windows. While often overshadowed between Windows 98, as well as its infamous 9X contemporary, Millennium Edition, and 2000's successor, Windows XP, thanks to its stability and security at the time of its lifespan, and a source code leak in 2004, Windows 2000 has garnered a cult following in the years since its release, with some fans even developing a shockingly effective compatibility layer for the operating system. Here's a video of me showcasing it. However, for Microsoft, development took some time for the operating system to come out, lasting a little over three years across a tumultuous development cycle of delays. Still, it's worth seeing just how the system evolved over time from NT4 to the final release, and that's what this history is about. In this first video, I will be covering the period in development up until the operating system, codenamed NT5.0, is given its final name, and the second video is everything beyond that until the release version of Windows 2000. Let's see how this prosumer version of Windows evolved over the course of its development. Windows 2000 began development in late 1996, shortly after the release of NT 4.0 in August of 1996. From the start, Microsoft envisioned to solve much of 4.0's major issues, such as the lack of plug-and-play support, as well as supporting FAT32, Windows 95 OSR 2's file system. The projected release date was slated for late 1997, of which due to many factors such as feature creep and unexpected shortcomings in the development process, would miss by over two years, but we'll get to those events in time. Development would continue throughout the rest of 1996 into early 1997, where we lead right into our first build for today. Build 1515 in March 1997 features some major changes coming from Windows NT 4.0 such as a new default background. This background would be powered by a service known as Active Desktop, which allowed users to set interactive HTML pages as their desktop, powered by Internet Explorer. This feature would be used for some time on both the Windows 9X and NT kernels. What's not in the final build, however, is the Show Desktop button which allowed users to easily show their desktop no matter how many windows were open. In addition, a new control panel, sidebar, and background for Explorer windows would be added along with other quality of life features. It's a good first build for Microsoft relating to NT 5.0. The next build, 1585, changed the default background back to the standard green. Some more control panel tweaks happened along the way along with another change in the Explorer windows, now resembling Windows 98's at the cost of the Show Desktop button, though it will make a return later. Unfortunately, I was unable to test in detail on this build due to it being a very unstable one, but I was lucky enough to catch an active desktop error, and it looks funky. Time progressed across 1997, being shown off at Comdex, WinHEC, and other various trade shows while being pushed to 1998, before NT 5.0 finally received its first proper beta, as build 1671 in September 1997. With this build, a new default active background is displayed, showing off that this is indeed the first beta for Windows NT 5.0. Active Directory, a key Windows Server component, was still in its infancy and was quite unstable. New hardware edition wizards were added, along with a version 2 of the program's wizard. Much of the components still resemble NT 4.0, but Microsoft was getting there. 
though they were mainly focused on Windows 98, at this point still in heavy development, which some of its feature set would spill into NT 5.0. It's also worth noting that at this point, it was not just x86 processors that were getting support for NT 5.0. The DEC Alpha line of computers were also supported, though less compatible builds are available for these machines than x86 ones. But this is one of those builds. Unfortunately, I do not have footage of such a machine at this time, but it goes to show that NT was more compatible back then for a while. Regardless, the start of 1998 brings us build 1729. The first build in the Beta 2 branch, it features a small insignia at the bottom right when logging in. However, it still has many Beta 1 references in the system, but it does have a rather loud sound when logging in. Most changes by this point involved the setup, which had begun to change a little bit as it started to resemble the final version with its steps. After that came build 1796, which marked a major change in the user experience. A blue background. While some elements of the user interface remained teal, it was a big change on the front end. Also changed were new Beta 2 references in the startup, as well as some of the final version's iconography. A welcome window now appears when first logged in as well. Making a return was the Show Desktop button, though in a different capacity from build 1515. There were some more control panel tweaks along the way as well. This spill came at the end of April of 1998, where Beta 2 was slated to go. However, that and the RTM kept getting pushed back due to code complexities. It would finally arrive in September in time for Microsoft's 1998 Professional Developer Conference, or PDC, as build 1877. This featured proper Beta 2 startup screens, a shell more closely resembling Windows 98, also changed around was Active Directory receiving long needed updates to get it up to snuff, along with Intellimirror, another similar service. The setup by this point very much resembled the final version as well, aside from some minor text deviations and the background screen, now changed significantly from before. Unfortunately, this build also killed off the Show Desktop button and it would not show up again until a decade later with Windows 7. Ultimately, Microsoft's plan by this point was for the then just released Windows 98 to be the final DOS-based version of Windows, and either NT 5.0 or the next version 6.0 would take over the lineup on the consumer front. As time moved on into October, we move into build 1911, a server-based build this build marked the beginning of the transition onto Beta 3, with a few components already being marked as such, like the Welcome program, though most components still said Beta 2. Otherwise, much of the components remained the same, aside from some minor tweaking. Build 1911 would turn out to be the final build being named under the Windows NT 5.0 codename, as only a week after the build was compiled, on October 27th, 1998, the final name for the operating system would be announced, Windows 2000. This was chosen as that was the projected release date for the OS. This ultimately began the decommissioning of the NT 5.0 branding, but it would take a few builds to get there, and a few more to finally get the operating system out the door. And that's what I'll be covering on December 15th, when part 2 of the Windows 2000 development history covering the post naming builds comes out. I hope you guys enjoyed this history, and be sure to subscribe for when part 2 comes out, and also hit that like button along the way. See you on the 15th!